What's up, everybody? We are back. John Della Rose here, the leading Hispanic voice in science fiction. Got an interesting side up today where it goes over the creator credits by Dennis O'Neill, who went by Denny O'Neill, uh, writer and editor for DC Comics for a long time. If you guys didn't hear the news, he passed away over the weekend. I think he was 85, as I recall. Of course, I should pull this stuff up before actually 81. So uh, advanced age, definitely. But, uh, you know, of course, uh, would have been nice if he could have been hung around for a little longer. Now, um, Denny O'Neill's best known for his contributions to Batman. And he had a run with Neil Adams where he actually created Ra's al Ghul and Talia al Ghul, uh, which have, you know, ever since that, uh, ever since the uh, newer Batman movie series that, you know, that's, that's been a villain that, you know, is uh, one of the top Batman villains out there at this point. Um, I'm going to read a couple comments from people who talked about him. Denny O'Neill was, this is somebody from Facebook posting, and I'm just going to leave him, leave the name out of it. Denny O'Neill was one of my favorite comic writers when I was growing up and remained so into my adult years. I was a fan of most of his peers in the seventies, but Denny and RG Goodwin stood out for me. His work inspired me to be a comic book writer and helped teach me how to do it. Since I was living up in Omaha, Nebraska, I got a chance to meet him in person. He was coming to a local comic book store, uh, so I worked on a pitch for Thunderbolt to give him. That was when DC were launching books with the Charlton characters, including the Question comic. My friend and I went the day he was there and stood in line holding a tight pitch inside plastic cover. Uh, let's see. By the time I was in front of him, I chickened out, did not give it to him. I told him I loved his work and had him sign the question number one. And years later, I got to have a phone conversation with Denny arranged by a friend. We talked about the comics, writing, life for a good while. And at the end, I brought up the story above. When I was done, he said, you should have given it to me. <laughs> and, that, and that sums up who he was. He wasn't saying the pitch would be accepted or necessarily that it was any good. He had no idea if that were the case. But what he said is that there's nothing ventured, nothing gained. He was saying he would have taken it and read it. And that's all anyone can ask. Very nice. Um, so let's see. Chuck Dixon, the writer for DC Comics, a longtime Batman guy who worked with Denny for a long time, says, if you're a comics fan, you need to know this. When Batman 500th issue was coming up, Denny O'Neill was under some pressure to make it the premier issue for the new art team, making 499 Jim Aparo's finally issue, final issue. Denny felt that Jim, who was due to go into semi-retirement, deserved to be on that issue given his decades of hard work and loyalty to DC Comics. Because of Denny, a comics master got to share in a big royalty payday of the issue 500 and brought it in for all who worked on it. Jim went to retirement with the biggest check of his career. That's the kind of guy Denny was. Pretty awesome as an editor to do that. Graham Nolan, another Batman artist, uh, says... Some more thoughts on Denny O'Neill. There's a lot being said and rightfully to do with his Batman contributions, but one of my favorite runs was his revamping of Superman in 1971. Kryptonite No More started with the depowering of the Man of Steel and introduced the Sand Creature. It was an amazing run, and he hated doing it. He felt that he didn't quite get Superman, and I told him maybe that's the reason it worked so well, because he was not coming from a place of comfort. Superman was uncomfortable, too, in the story, making him vulnerable to the reader, something we'd not really seen before. It got him thinking. It's awesome. And what I've got pulled up here is just a list of Denny O'Neill books. He worked on The Shadow. He worked on World Worlds, Wonder Woman. I mean, you just go through. He's in everything. It's uh, unbelievable how long his list is uh, for both Marvel and DC. His other notable book was Green Arrow, Green Lantern, uh, that crossover. That was a very big one, and there is an absolute edition of that. I definitely recommend people pick that up. It's a good book, and I'm currently reading his Sh Shazam. He also was a person. He revamped not only Superman in the 70s, but he revamped Shazam right here, which is this is the book. You see O'Neill. And C.C. Beck, whoops, there we go, is actually the artist who... Um, originally developed Shazam uh, back in the 30s, and he came back for a little stint with Denny O'Neill also. So very cool stuff. I just wanted to give this guy a, uh, you know, a little shout out on the channel because he really had so much to do with comic book history. He did some work on The Shadow, on The Question. I mean, just uh, just so much work 
hardworking guy. And of course, the Batman editorial contributions were huge also. So that's it. Um, I hope uh, you guys learned a little bit about Denny O'Neill. He seemed, I never got to interact with him or meet him, seemed like a guy who just truly loved comics and did so much for the medium. And uh, we want to give him our respects today. If you have any memories of him or of his books, please leave the comment down below. We appreciate that. Hit the like and subscribe button and we will be back soon.